Morning gentlemen, morning morning. It's a nice soft walk here in Greenwich Park. I wanted to talk to you about a book I'm reading and uh, its interesting components so maybe give you I suppose a few enriched key components that have come out of the book so far and it deals with the successful mindful trader um, so I'm going to show you Randy Howe, R-A-N-D-E, Howe's uh, book. Now, if you search for mindful trading, mastering your emotions and in the inner game, you'll uh, find his book and I'd s uh, sincerely suggest um, purchasing it. Now. What do I have to tell you today? Um, well, firstly, I'm not finished it, but uh, understanding the problem of how we are wired and the mind game is the first segment to later in the book solving the problem. So I suppose all I want to do in this short clip is to define the problem for you and why this is a far more complex issue and why people keep circling back intelligent smart people keep circling back from a wall to return to it and smash their face against it a little bit more because on the surface it doesn't sound like a particularly intelligent thing to do but psychologically and emotionally how we get caught in these repetitive pattern loops and how deeply psychologically and the shock for me physiologically so that means by mind wiring and by subsequent body function you are always rerouted into the same rut it's kind of like riding your bicycle down a muddy path and there's been you know floods and there's sort of water that has run and created a sort of lots of ruts but then all the ruts lead into one deep gorge of a rut and every time you take the path you're trying to avoid all the ruts so that you don't get directed into this main you know get caught by one of the tributaries and then get forcefully directed into the main rough rut you keep trying to hold a different line and no matter which way you turn there's always a tributary with a similar line to the one you're taking that redirects you into that rut and as a, as a cyclist, you can actually see that happening and consciously keep fighting. Psychologically, sometimes you don't even realize this is happening. And you wake up and then you're in the main rut again, having been caught there before. And it's all stony and it's really nasty too and you can't steer and you often wipe out. So one of the interesting things, first of all, to remember and to understand is that our brains and the principle of fear the principle of fear is the single most primitive aspect of your mental mind it is the single most overriding and principal aspect of your mind in other words fear is designed to protect you this is the thinking of saber-toothed tiger around every corner behind every bush in short it triggers very powerfully and overwhelmingly into your fight or flight response in the case of the saber-toothed tiger I'd certainly advise if you ever run into one that you go for flight as opposed to fight but anyway it's a slightly um, different tangent uh, but nonetheless it adrenalizes you physiologically so this goes beyond the mental if you see something that is untowards that gives you the creepy little feelings that there's a presence around you corner of your eyes ghost like movement or a sense that you're being watched you go into highly adrenalized and ready for biological protection in other words this is all about saving your life this has to be one of the most critically and strongly wired net, net responses. Now, the problem as it is today in the modern society is 
broadly you're not expecting to run into a saber-toothed tiger or even um, currently available predator of any great um, scale or natural threat in the modern environment so a lion or a normal tiger they just aren't here and it's no longer a viable threat to us however the brain response the primitive primitive brain response that has been established is still there within you and it can't determine between the biological threat <coughs> in other words the root and the, the final end rut you end into is always the same whether it is a real biological threat to your existence or whether it is just psychological discomfort to a trade that is taking money out of you remember something with trading we get all the fears as well fear of losing money fear of missing out on making money um, which we'll come back to in a, in a, in a moment um, and th there's actually a third one and I've gone and dropped it um, but I'll have to uh, fulfill the list or you have to badger me in the comments um, for that but the point is trading prompts and promotes and provokes because we all have a fear of maybe getting old and not having sufficient money not having enough money put aside pension or an economic collapse taking away our resources our homes or whatever the case may be there's all that level of fear all that being wealthy does is buy you more comfort and new worries on protecting that which you already have which may in fact be the third fear that I've not remembered fear of loss um, fear of having that which you already have taken away and fear of missing out on something you should be in so as a result of all of this by the way I'm on the dead cat mic by the way um, and it's a lot less windy so I'm hoping audio is going to be a bunch better um, so as a result of all of this what actually happens when you encounter fear at a trading level and this you will recognize what is blood oxygen and glucose is actually redirected away from your frontal cortex where all the rational thinking is happening this is why it is so damn difficult and physiologically once your fear reflex is being um, triggered if it hasn't been identified labeled and managed you can't kill it but you can manage it if you haven't already identified it and brought it under control and managed it and more on this in a future clip what happens is you have a reduced capacity anyway for rational thinking and one of the things that happen at your desk when you're at, when you know you've had a fear response and this is not from the the office saber-toothed tiger this is from your trading which prompts fear responses in its own way or failure to recognize by your brain the difference between a biological stress and um, and just comfort on a P&L um, what actually happens is this additional glucose and oxygen is driven away from the brain the frontal cortex specifically to your muscles and what tends to happen is it needs to be utilized as well so if you're finding yourself sitting at your desk and you're breathing shallow see these are classic cases of someone who's been induced into some degree of flight or fight by things happening in a computer screen not a biological threat you're breathing shallow, you're hunched up, you're pinching your traps up, your shoulders, you're taut, and you're using only the top 20% of your lungs. You're not getting that relaxed, that yogic, Pilates and yoga type, deep-seated balance and core. You're feeling hyper. You're feeling hyper and at a highly um, nervous, stimulated state, which is one of the other reasons why I warn about the use of caffeine, um, which is very much a nervous system stimulant. Um, and you're hunched and you can get at an end of a day and you can have stiff back, stiff traps, stiff and feel thrashed and tired and slightly adrenally exhausted. So your adrenal glands feel exhausted, but you've not done anything. You've not run, not gone and worked out. You've sat at your desk. How did this all come about? This is unexercised fight or flight response that has been tensing your muscles, waiting for the hammer to fall. But that hammer, this coffee shop's a bit loud now, um, that hammer isn't falling. It may be on your PL, 
in the ether world, but it's not falling physiologically, uh, it's not falling biologically as a threat on you in any way. And um, what, you, what we have to realize is after, when the trading day is done, let's say it's an equity market and not a 24-7, and you analyze again bad decisions you made, they look so stupid. How did I do that? A, it's the benefit of hindsight, which never goes away when you look back on things, but B, you're back in a rational mode. It's over. There is no new threat. The day's closed, the positions are closed, the computer switched off, the market is done for the day, and you're looking at how you might have traded during the day and say, why did I do that? Why did I bottle it? Why did I snatch? Why did I grab? Why did I... Uh, why didn't I just stick to plan? Um, how did that all happen? Um, because you are now in a rational state. You have your normal levels of oxygen and glucose at the front cortex of your brain. So the physiologically, you are in a different state. Physiologically, emotionally, and psychologically. So how the brain functions, the resources provided to the brain for that functioning are completely and all different. You're comparing two different Francis's. One that was um, running scared, tense, could hardly breathe, and another that is relaxed post-event and, and has time and doesn't feel pressured and has oxygen in his brain at sufficient levels and glucose and can, in the cold light of day, rationally analyze something. And this is why you keep repeating these paths, because your most primitive, your most primitive fear-based response is super dominant, and it creates patterns. So what tends to happen is you start, your brain starts to develop codes and patterns of responses. This is kind of like a boxer that does a left-right-left -left in a combination throw. The brain recognizes something that's effective um, for saving you and it creates a pattern structure and it's doing it for your survival but it's working against you in terms of how you need to behave for trading. And these patterns are hard-worn ruts. It keeps reaffirming and regrooving them and that then becomes who you are. You start to think it's not who you are but those patterns, you are an assembly, you are, you're an infinite amount of possibilities. But what you end up happening is you have these templates, that are various templates and patterns of response, and um, maybe acting aggressively when you feel cornered, or um, behaving that you've put in before, and that when you're faced with a discomfort situation, you have three or four archetypes of response that you refer to. It isn't who you are. It's a bunch of templates that have been dropped onto you that your brain has seized as a pattern-based response. Why does it seek to create patterns? It creates patterns so that you can instinctively go through the gears instead of having to analyze. So what it does is it takes the rational analysis out of it and gives you just an A, B, C, D template. Do this, do that, do that, and then throw your right hook uh, and run, you know. Um, and this is, this, is the, this, is what, this is what happens. It's designed to help you so that you don't have to rationally sit down and contemplate and think through things. You can instinctively respond. But the wrong instinctive responses to a trading situation and the override of slowing down and having a rational thought is highly unproductive for trading and then this brings me to the markets and how um, people develop patterns and how crowds themselves develop patterns so let's just think about um, the um, the market the markets going melt up every time we recognize a market has gone melt up it's usually the beginning of the end of a bull market what is actually happening is that people are who are having fear of missing out. In other words, they've said, this is a terrible economy. I can't invest in this market. The market's gone up. This is a terrible economy. I can't invest in the market. The market's gone up further. Well, the market's going up, but I just don't believe it. You know, the economy's terrible. Surely it's, going to, it's got to lean on um, the outcome of this market, and the market's gone up. We've gone recently from the 19,000s in two months. We've gone up 2,000 points on the Dow. We're through 21,000. Now it's going melt up and faster. The guy who's been missing out, who should be having his capital work, can't bear and is suffering from fear of missing out. He goes and puts his money now in the market. And in fact, what we're seeing is people have been trained through the day trading area on dot com 
many of them quit their jobs and they couldn't bear to miss out and they wanted the easy money and the greed is good and I'll make more money as a day trader than I will flipping burgers at uh, McDonald's and they all were day traders in the dot-com boom and they were largely making money many of them because they were net long most of the day rarely were they um, shorting because most people don't understand how to short and they were net long in a bull melt-up market um, and those guys are all gone because the market changed and they had only one pattern of response that kept getting positively rewarded that was buy buy in the morning and sell by the end of the day and you've caught most of the up, the up move um, and the minute that there was markets that no longer uh, complied to the particular template that they developed that they thought um, inspounds them they were in huge huge trouble and none of those folk that just on a whim and chasing the latest boom that got into day trading during the dot-com boom I would say a very small percentage I can't say because I don't have any numbers at all are still full-time traders today in normal markets and traded through the bear market the sell-off and were successful and continually generating money um, and the reason is they had only one pattern or template of response and it's kind of like a guy who goes jab jab hook jab jab hook jab jab hook um, if you're in the right conditions it'll work once but if you're in an m a fight and someone kicks you in the stomach um, you don't even get to throw your jab jab hook it's a different kind of fight um, so it's fascinating so the patterns um, they got positive enforcement for their pattern and the more you get positive enforcement the more you dig that groove so eventually they were one trick ponies that dug a very deep groove of go long tech stocks during the day jump in and out um, they might have thought they were doing something difficult but they kept getting positive enforcement positive enforcement and making some money they thought they were godlike traders and then when the market changed their template ceased to work they were exposed for being a one-trick pony in a certain kind of market conditions so we're now having a melt up again and this is being driven by probably um, the trackers because now it's become common knowledge that trackers beat most actively managed funds so people have stopped they were might have been intraday traders in the 90s they now think I realized that um, I had one pattern and it just happened to work at the one point in time um, maybe I just buy the trackers um, because they generally beat it so they've maybe changed and been smart um, and what's that happened is we have another pattern that has formed the same pattern occurred in the 50s when we had the nifty 50s era and all the major market caps all the major market caps continued to go up while the rest of the market peeled away and was doing quite poorly and we're seeing this now on the smaller caps in the US and even the mid caps that are quite soft and even selling off um, but the overall indices are going up because the corporatocracy the mega corps um, the schmuck bucks of this world that sell the bulk of coffee but never make any profit in Britain but keep opening stores um, and Google that negotiates its tax um, with George Osborne that it pays and you know volunteers a few million um, these guys are getting away uh, and going and flying and they are highly rated and they've got economies of scale and they can do tax arbitrage they've broken into a new level um, across different tax jurisdictions and they've got this huge huge scaled out model of going up um, but the rest of the market is a lot weaker um, now we've seen this all before so we're having a repeat of a pattern but it's a much longer cycle pattern it's a pattern of the nifty 50s at the end of the nifty 50s roughly around the 60s we had uh, mid 60s from 68 largely accepted through to 82 stagflation and the market went largely nowhere while money buying power was doing less and less and less for you and that was the fault uh, interest rate hike cycle that ended in the early 80s 82 81 which was then the seeding of the next bull market that we're in now um, and we're now going for what's going, the equivalent of what was in the 50s the nifty 50 uh, rate so you can see how markets develop patterns as well as a new generation has to learn and go through the natural responses of the pattern so we're having the baby boomer generation going through the pattern responses of a cycle uh, and we're getting um, similar patterns so it's fascinating we have patterns in our brain that we develop to defend ourselves from biological threat and these are the key and that's the most important point I wanted to make to you um, but I believe that then ripples out into markets patterns because the markets are actually just a construct of everybody individual they're an aggregation 
of the mentality of the crowd that is participating in them. Anyway, that's Francis. Tell me if you found this interesting.